Welcome to another presentation from Yahweh Nisi School of Ministry, where we bring you the word of Yahweh while honoring the Hebraic roots of the Bible. Are you ready to walk in your godly purpose and calling? Don't hesitate any longer. It's time to serve Yahweh. Visit our website, www.serveyahweh.com for courses, ministry training, and more. Meanwhile, stay tuned for another great teaching from Yahweh Nisi School of Ministry. Yahweh Nisi Ministries presents Table Talk with Tor, honoring the Hebraic roots of the faith, with your host, Sonia Anderson. This is Table Talk with Tor. I'm Sonia Anderson, and today's topic is Tender Mercies. Today's talking points include sowing seeds of mercy, covenantal relationships, mercy, and not sacrifice. Our key verse today is coming from Matthew chapter 5, verse 7, which says, Blessed, content, sheltered by Yahweh's promises are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. So this is um, from the Sermon on the Mount, and it is a direct quote from Yeshua Messiah himself, and it is a promise to us that we would be content and sheltered by Yahweh's promises as long as we are showing mercy toward others. We will be a recipient of that mercy as well. So we're looking at definitions of the word merciful and mercy. Remember, uh, Yeshua began by stating, blessed are the merciful. In that scripture, the merciful is translated from the Greek word eleemon, which means to be compassionate and full of pity. And then obtaining mercy or will receive mercy, that word mercy is translated from the Greek word eleo, which means to have pity or mercy on or to show mercy or compassion. So sowing seeds of mercy, how can we do this? We know according to scripture that whatever we sow, that is what we will reap. So whatever we put into the ground spiritually or physically, that is what's going to return a harvest for us. In 2 Samuel chapter 22, verse 26, it says, with the loving and loyal, you show yourself loving and loyal. With the blameless, you show yourself blameless. So if you choose to be loving and loyal, Yahweh will also shower you with that same benefit. If you sh choose to be, if you choose to have a blameless walk before him, he will shower you also with that benefit of being blameless. Let's take a look at some other scriptures regarding sowing seeds of mercy. So Galatians chapter 6 verses 7 through 10 says, Do not be deceived. Yahweh is not mocked. He will not allow himself to be ridiculed nor treat it with contempt, nor allow his precepts to be scornfully set aside. For whatever a man sows, this and this only is what he will reap. For the one who sows to his flesh his sinful capacity, his worldliness, his disgraceful impulses, will reap from the flesh ruin and destruction. But the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. Let us not grow weary. Or become discouraged in doing good. For at the proper time we will reap if we do not give in. So then, while we as individual believers have the opportunity, let us do good to all people, not only being helpful, but also doing that which promotes their spiritual well being, and especially be a blessing to those of the household of faith. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verses 6 through 8 says, Now remember this, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows generously that blessings may come to others will also reap generously and be blessed. Let each one give thoughtfully and with purpose, just as he has decided in his heart, not grudgingly or under compulsion. For Yahweh loves a cheerful giver and delights in the one whose heart is in the gift. 
And Yahweh is able to make all grace, every favor, and earthly blessing come in abundance to you, so that you may always, under all circumstances, regardless of the need, have complete sufficiency in everything, being completely self-sufficient in him, and have an abundance for every good work and act of charity. Luke chapter 6, verse 38. Give, and it will be given to you. They will pour into your lap a good measure, pressed down, shaking together, and running over, with no space left for more. For with the standard of measurement you use, when you do good to others, it will be measured to you in return. And finally, Proverbs 22.8 says, He who sows injustice will reap a harvest of trouble, and the rod of his wrath with which he oppresses others will fail. So here we have um, sowing and reaping as a benefit and as a negative thing. If you sow something negative, you will reap a harvest of trouble. If you are sowing seeds of mercy, you will reap an abundance of mercy for your life. Um, whatever you sow, that you will also reap. That is a law. That is a scriptural law. So think about what you are pouring into others and consider whether or not you want that to be a harvest for your life. So when we think about sowing and reaping, I want to connect that to covenantal relationships. A covenantal relationship is one that is based on a promise. The promise may be between you and another person, you and Yahweh himself, or between Yahweh and you. Um, if the if a covenantal relationship is between two parties equally, that means both parties have to agree to the said terms in order for that covenant relationship to thrive and be successful. However, if Yahweh can make you a promise, and then it depends entirely upon him to carry that out, and sometimes you can make a promise to Yahweh, and it would depend on you to carry your portion of the agreement out. A covenant is defined as an agreement or legal contract. Covenant relationship examples include marriage between two people, definitely based on covenantal promises. Also, the marriage between the assembly as the bride and Yeshua as the bridegroom. That's a valid covenantal relationship. And another one includes a friendship covenant. Those are covenantal relationships. You might also want to include covenantal relationships with family members, such as a sibling or aunt um, niece nephew type relationship whoever you have made a, a standard agreement with and it could be anyone that that will come into the level of a covenantal relationship well why am i talking about covenantal relationships as connected to mercy well we as humans are constantly in relationships and we have to honor these covenantal relationships when one person breaks their covenant it is hard for us to show mercy and so Malachi 2.16 says, For I hate divorce, says Yahweh, the God of Israel, and him who covers his garment with wrong and violence, says Yahweh of hosts. Therefore, keep watch on your spirit so that you do not deal treacherously with your wife. Now, the term divorce has deeper meaning than just, I'm going to sign a piece of paper and dissolve a marriage contract. That term, divorce, is translated from the Hebrew word shellac, which means to send away, cast off, or let go. And that word hate here, when he says, I hate divorce, is translated from the Hebrew word sane, which means an enemy, unloved, or to turn against. So when Yahweh says, let me go back one, when he says, I hate divorce, I hate when people are turned away, when people are cast off, when people are put aside um, outside of their covenantal relationships. So Yahweh is saying he hates when people are put outside of their covenantal relationships. In this particular section of the Bible, Matthew, Malachi chapter 2, verse 16, he is literally talking about marriage between a man and woman. Um, and when that marriage goes wrong, the person who is covering their wife with violence, um, he's specifically warning husbands to keep watching your spirit so that they do not deal treacherously or in a wrong and violent way with their wives. So this is a very specific covenantal relationship he's referring to, but I really want to zero in on the, I hate divorce. He's really saying here, I hate when one party is sent away, cast off or put outside of their covenantal relationship. So if we just take that, that portion and really meditate on it, Think about all of your covenantal relationships. 
any relationship that you have a promise with the other party or that other party has promised you something, it's a mutual agreement, a one-sided agree one -sided agreement. However, the agreement has gone forth. What Yahweh says here is he hates when that agreement is broken and when someone is put outside of their covenant relationships. I want to bring your attention to the biblical story of Abraham and Sarah and Hagar. Abraham was married to Sarah. Sarah um, could not conceive children and eventually allowed Abraham to sleep with her servant, Hagar, who did conceive Ishmael, a child. So once she conceived and became pregnant, as you might imagine, the relationship between Sarah and Hagar became very tense and they were not getting along very well. So Abraham finally said to Sarah, hey, you know, do what you need to for um, your your servant. She's in your hands. So Sarah just sent her away, cast her off, right? But she is still carrying Abraham's seed, which was a part of the covenant promise that Yahweh made to Abraham that in all of his seed would be blessed. Um, he was really hoping that Abraham's seed would land in his wife, um, his covenantal wife. However, even in the midst of Abraham making this error, um, Yahweh still cho chose to keep his end of the bargain. So Yahweh had to honor his covenantal promise toward Abraham. So here we have Hagar being cast off, cast into the desert, cast aside by a tree. He says, look, I don't even want to see him die, you know. And at this point, Yahweh sends an angel to Hagar, basically stating, you are going to be blessed. Your son is going to be blessed. He is Abraham's seed, right? Go back, return. Um, Hagar actually did what the angel of Yahweh instructed and returned. And Ishmael was also blessed as a result of it. He did not die. So that's a, a good thing. But the honoring of that covenant relationship. And the fact is here, we even see Yahweh acting on that promise of, I hate divorce. I hate when someone is cast away, cast off, cast aside, put outside of their covenantal promise. He hates that. Um, he actually restored that situation, even though it was done in error. Like Abraham was really supposed to honor his covenantal commitment with his wife. This, even despite Abraham's mistakes, Yahweh kept his end of the bargain. So here we have this mercy, not sacrifice in covenantal relationships. Matthew chapter 9, verse 13 says, Go and learn what this scripture means. I desire compassion for those in distress and not animal sacrifice. For I did not come to call to repentance the self-proclaimed righteous who see no need to change, but sinners who recognize their sin and actively seek forgiveness. So here we have this self-proclaimed righteous. This is what Yahweh calls self-proclaimed righteous. Those who sin and do not recognize that they're, they are sinning or in a sinful state and choose not to change those who feel justified by their actions um yahweh really wants to seek after and encourage those to be knit, knitted back into the fold who are who recognize who are repentant they recognize their sin they're actively seeking forgiveness he wants us to show compassion for those in distress right he's stating that um animal sacrifices which was valid before yeshua became our ultimate sacrifice um it's not something that he really delights and he would much rather you forgive that person, show compassion and knit them back into the fold. So Yahweh here is demonstrating that he's all about inclusion. He really is. He does not want anyone. He does not want anyone to perish. He does not want anyone to be outside of their covenantal marriage, their covenantal relationships and their covenantal family. And your covenantal family can be honestly chosen by you, like literally handpicked those who you choose to partner with and enter into relationships with, that's your covenantal family. He wants us to operate and live in families. So he's saying here, when someone is in distress, when someone has actively sinned, they know they have messed up. He, he wants us to choose to show compassion for these people rather than sac rather than sacrifice our relationship with them. So how can we do this? It could be challenging and it could actually be at a place where you would say, I want to show compassion and restore this person to a certain point. Um, but one thing I want to reel you back to is Yahweh's mercy towards us. For, he's asking us to do something for others that he has already done and continues to do for us. Lamentations chapter 3 verses 22 through 23 states, It is because of Yahweh's loving kindness that we are not consumed, because his tender compassions 
never fail. They are new every morning. Great and beyond measure is your faithfulness. Kindness. Okay, so when you think about showing mercy toward others, and if you're coming into a place where you, you find that to be a tad bit difficult, think about Yahweh's promise that if we show mercy towards others, that we can abide and remain under his canopy of love, his protection, and his mercy will be shown towards us. Now, if it's not shown to us, we will be utterly condemned and consumed. So Lamentations chapter 3 verses 22 through 23 states, it is because of Yahweh's loving kindness that we are not consumed because his tender compassions never fail fail they are new every morning great and beyond measure is your faithfulness psalm chapter 78 38 says but he the source of the but he the source of compassion and loving kindness forgave their wickedness and did not destroy them many times he restrained his anger and did not stir up all of his wrath so yahweh is the source of our compassion so let's keep that in mind because we cannot show the level of mercy and loving kindness that he wants us to show if we are not connected to him and the way we are connected to him is through his son yeshua messiah so in order to actively exhibit mercy compassion and loving kindness in the way that he wants us to we have to be connected to the source yahweh himself is the source of compassion Psalms 103 verse 10 says, He has not dealt with us according to our sins as we deserve, nor rewarded us with punishment according to our wickedness. So if he did, we most of us would not be alive. It, scripture does tell us that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of Yahweh. So had he, if he chose to deal with us according to our sins, we would most likely perish under his wrath. But part of Yahweh's mercy towards us is he chooses not to deal with us according to our sins and and not punish us according to our wickedness because he's relying on the blood of his son, Yeshua Messiah, which covers all. So again, that connection to the source. So remaining in Yeshua Messiah and being connected to Yahweh through him allows us to to be free from the punishment of our sin. Jeremiah 3 verse 12 says, Go and proclaim these words toward the north where the ten tribes have been taken as captives and say, Return, faithless Israel, says Yahweh. I will not look on you in anger, for I am gracious and merciful, says Yahweh. I will not be angry forever. So there might come a point in your life where you absolutely know that you know that you know that you've messed up and that Yahweh is angry with you for messing up in that way, um, Yahweh still wants you to return to him. He, you can always come home to the Father's love and to your full and rightful inheritance. He wants you to come home. So in this scripture, it says, return, faithless Israel, says Yahweh. I will not look on you in anger. I'm gracious and merciful, and I will not be angry forever. So that weeping truly does endure for a night. But hey, that joy comes in the morning if you return to Yahweh's love. Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 11 says, For I am with you, says Yahweh, to save you. I will destroy, for I will destroy completely all the nations where I have scattered you. But I will not destroy you completely, but I will judge and discipline you fairly and will by no means regard you as guiltless and leave you unpunished. So here we have almost a complete opposite where Yahweh is going to punish certain people, but he has shown his mercy in this way, that he will not destroy them completely. So there will be some discipline issued and going forth, but because they are guilty for what they've done, it will not be an utter destruction. He's going to show mercy by um, retaining, by not issuing a complete and utter destruction. And then we have Psalm 86, verse 15, which says, But you, Yahweh, are Elohim, who protects and is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in loving kindness and truth. So again, Yahweh is very slow to be angry with us. He abounds in loving kindness and truth. He is absolutely merciful and gracious, and he continuously protects us through that mercy and that graciousness that he has. So he wants us to demonstrate that towards others. The more we demonstrate that towards others, the more we receive from him. So that's very, very important. Micah chapter 7, verses 18 through 19 says, 
Who is a God like you who forgives wickedness and passes over the rebellious acts of the remnant of his possession? He does not retain his anger forever because he constantly delights in mercy and loving kindness. He shall again have compassion on us. He will subdue and tread underfoot our wickedness, destroying sin's power. Yes, you will cast all our sins into the depths of the sea. So Yahweh will forgive our wickedness if we allow, allow him to. And the way we allow him to is by forgiving others. If we forgive others, then we ourselves will be forgiven. If we are merciful toward others, then we will also receive that mercy. He will pass over our rebellious acts. He does not stay angry with us forever. So Yahweh toward us is all about mercy. He's all about compassion. He's all about love. He would much rather keep our covenant relationship with him that we remain in this covenantal family, our spiritual family, rather than see a sacrifice or cut the branch off and just be tossed outside the camp. He is much more concerned with us operating as a whole and as partners with him in the glory. That being said, he will test us sometimes. Um, if you look at Abraham and Sarah, that story again, when Abraham finally did uh, fulfill his part of the agreement and have a son with his wife Sarah Yahweh tested him this was a long-awaited promise they were clearly beyond the age of childbearing they were actually elderly when they had Isaac their son and when Yahweh's promise came to pass but Yahweh clearly said to them and Isaac your, sh your seed shall be called so with that and Isaac your seed shall be called all of Yahweh's covenantal promises rested in Isaac so once Abraham and Sarah had Isaac, Isaac was like this prized child at the end of the rainbow. Then Yahweh um, instructs Abraham one day to say, take Isaac, your only son whom thou love, and sacrifice him to me. Now, child sacrifice in this day and age was not an uncommon practice, but it was a pagan practice. It certainly wasn't one that followers of Yahweh engaged in. Paul, give really just followed out Yahweh's instruction, not without great emotion. If we look at uh, the book of Jasher, an ancient historical text, it goes more deeper into the story. And Abraham and Sarah, they had a lot of emotion behind this. Of course, Abraham did not tell Sarah the whole truth. He lied to her and subsequently lost her because of that. Um, but he did lie to her up front and said that he was just going to take Isaac away. Like he was, he was going to come back, you know. He didn't tell her that he was going to sacrifice Isaac. So the night before and everything, and even walking up, Abraham had great emotion, cried about it a couple times, but chose to follow out Yahweh's instruction, honoring Yahweh himself as creator of heaven and earth and ruler of all things. So he did bring Isaac clear up to Mount Moriah and literally was ready to slaughter him in that second and then the angel of Yahweh was sent to stop him instantly and say no look I, it was basically a test Yahweh now knows that you you love him because you did not withhold from him even your only son so I, Abraham was rewarded with his son Isaac and there was a ram placed in the thicket that was actually created from the beginning from the foundation of the world during the days of creation specifically for that purpose specifically for that moment that ram was created so abraham sacrificed that ram instead of his son praise yahweh for that and that that level of mercy in that moment was astounding not just to abraham but to isaac who actually said you know i don't want to profane the burnt offering if you look at the ancient historical text of jasher isaac pretty much said do this quickly i don't want to profane the burnt offering and um and basically ruin your sacrifice so they were both in it at that point even though it was an emotional thing for the two of them um Yahweh chose to honor his covenantal commitment to abraham which was a huge one but he wanted to make sure abraham's heart was in the right place so that also demonstrates Yahweh's loving kindness and tender compassion um, that he is faithful to what he promised us. No matter what it looks like, no matter what it takes, Yahweh will always keep his word. His word cannot fail. It is impossible for him to lie. So if he spoke it, it will come to pass. If you want that covenantal commitment for yourself, if you're saying, I don't know Yahweh for myself, I don't really know how to show mercy toward others, and I'm not 
um, one who is quick to forgive, things like that. It's really because you have to be connected to the source. I did mention before that this is almost impossible without being connected to the source of mercy and compassion, who is Yahweh himself. And that source of mercy and compassion, the avenue toward that is Yeshua, who is love. So if you don't have love, you can't have mercy and compassion. And in order to get those three things, you absolutely have to know Yeshua. Yeshua Messiah for yourself. Romans chapter 10 verses 9 through 13 says, If you acknowledge and confess with your mouth that Yeshua is Lord, recognizing his power, authority, and majesty as Elohim, and believe in your heart that Yahweh raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart a person believes in Yeshua as Savior, resulting in his justification, that is being made righteous, being freed of the guilt of sin, and made acceptable to Yahweh. And with the mouth he acknowledges and confesses his faith openly, resulting in and confirming his salvation. For the scripture says, whoever believes in him, whoever adheres to, trusts in, and relies on him, will not be disappointed in his expectations. For there is no distinction between Jew and Gentile, for the same Elohim is Lord over all of us, and he is abounding in riches, blessings, for all who call on him in faith and prayer. For whoever calls on the name of Yahweh in prayer will be saved. May Yahweh add a blessing to the reading of his word, and I will see you on the next Table Talk with Torah.